How's everyone doing? Zero here, and today I'm going to show you how to play, in my opinion, the best character in the game, Inkling. Now, this character actually has a ton of things that are actually ridiculous about the character. Like, Inkling in general is just ridiculously strong, and in this video, I just want to show you as much as I can so you can get going up and, you know, start doing well with this character because if there's any character that uh, is, is, is the meta right now, it's this one. Now, almost every top player is secondary in them. Uh, everybody is, is looking into Inkling that's really good right now at the game. So this is the character. This is, this is, I feel like this is the most important character in the meta right now, for sure. Now, let's just get right into the basics. So Inklings have, obviously, they have the ink mechanic. Um, if you do attacks that use ink, you waste ink, as you can see on the grenade, including smash attacks, specials, and whatnot. And so pretty much any attack that uses ink primarily will drain your meter. Now, while you're blocking, you can press B and you can recharge ink. You can also cancel this by pressing B again. It does have a, uh, an amount of lag that I want to mention. Because after, after you stop charging, as you can see, it takes a little bit of time for me to charge. Now, in terms of ink, if you don't have ink, one thing that will happen very quick is that ink cleans don't really play as well as they do with ink. Now, now here, right here, I've run out of ink. Now, if I do smash attacks and whatnot, um, as you can see, that did 14.6 uh, damage. But if I have full ink, you see the difference? It has a difference in damage. So that's why you want to have ink. At the same time, if you don't have ink, uh, some of your attacks just don't work properly. Let me show you, for example. You see how the roller doesn't really <laughs> work anymore and then your jab doesn't really you know shoot out any ink so you pretty much every time that your opponent is off the level or they or you just kill them or any downtime you want to be charging up ink a little bit as much as possible pretty much at all times it's extremely important for you to be having ink at any point in time in the match you don't want to be cut up without ink now let's just go into the normals of the character um Inkling in general just has a lot of very powerful combos, but the reason Inklings is so good is because of Ink. Now, Ink has this ridiculous thing that basically when you get Ink on you, you receive more damage. So your attacks just become more powerful. So, for example, let me spray from with Ink. Now let me force smash. <laughs> you see how that's a ridiculous amount of damage. Now let me see, let me show you, for example, me doing like a throw into an aerial. That's absolutely ridiculous amount of damage. It's it's actually nutty. Uh, the multiplier is 1.5 in terms of ink. And obviously, the more ink that they have, the longer the effect will last. So keep that in mind when spraying opponents. Now, in terms of usual BMBs, uh, the thing that's the most important is, since as you can see, ink is just really powerful to land on your opponent. You want to think of as many ways as possible as you can land ink on your opponent. Now, these are some methods that I found to be extremely good to land ink on your opponent. First of all, um, fourth throw automatically inks your opponent. So if you gr get a grab and they don't have ink, you should always go for fourth throw because it will get ink on the opponent and then you can do the rest of your combos or options and then you'll do way more damage. Uh, it'll put the pressure right up on them. You could alternatively uh, land a jab in general, which as you can see will do a lot of damage and it automatically inks your opponent as well. You want to kind of keep mashing A towards the end and then let it go as they're drifting away. This is for maximum damage output, but also so you get the most amount of ink. For example, if I were to just do the normal jab and don't really mash it, you know, Chrome doesn't really get as much ink. But if I were to press A a little bit more, then Chrome gets way more ink and it does more damage. So you should be doing that option every time. Now, the way I play ink thing is that I see fourth throw and jab as the easiest way to land ink. And this is mainly because you can combo into this move. Um, border, border, neutral air, and back air all combo into grab. But more importantly, they also combo into jab. You can do fair, jab. You can do back air, jab. And obviously, neutral air into jab. So all three of your aerials will permit you to actually combo into a jab. Now, here's another crazy concept is that 
if you get a jab or a grab, both those things will automatically link you. So by you basically playing neutral, but doing forwarders, doing backers, doing neutralers, if you land any of this move, jab or dash grab into, in, into ink. So it's pretty unescapable for your opponent to not get inked at some point. You can also roller, which automatically inks your opponent as well, but roller is a commitment. And while it is very strong, it does have, let's say it's more a commitment than just doing a back air or a forwarder while in neutral. You can also throw mines with the down B or grenades, whatever they call, and they do ink the opponent quite a bit, but be mindful of the fact that they use a good chunk of ink. So you don't want to be throwing them around all willy-nilly. But to make sure that you're landing your targets. I'm I find gr uh, the grenades to be most useful when I'm at the ledge. Because you because they actually drop down pretty far down. You can actually edge guard characters like this. Because they explode on contact as well. You can also use it as a ledge trap. You can just drop the anchor on here and then block. Then cover options. Really good for that as well. You can also use it to cover platforms. You can drop it around here when you're unsure someone's going to land there. And then you cover the other platform. Uh, grenades allow you to be very, very creative with gameplay. You can also alternatively up the at a shield. Now, let's say for some reason someone hits your shield, you can alternatively just up the at a shield that also gives them ink. You can also um, neutral B and platforms because if someone's on, if someone's actually blocking this, it actually does a whole ton of shield damage. Um, so if someone's blocking a platform, you can just like aim it up, or you can also do a B reverse into the the ink. And this actually is a lot of shield pressure and some characters just can't deal with it. You can go into a grab after that or a jab combo. It's a really easy way to land the actual move. Now, those are the very basics of Inkling, but what makes Inkling really, really good? Now, first of all, in terms of your aerials, you can do the majority of your aerials after doing an Utko. So you can do like space neutraler into a forward space neutral into a backer neutraler neutraler. Those are like the main basics. Pretty much you have a lot of aerial mobility. And also, your dash stance is ridiculous. Look at look at Inkling's dash. First of all, they completely sank into the ground, making their movement very ambiguous because they don't come out of the ink unless they're doing an action. So like, you can't really tell if you're gonna get hit by a dash attack, by a down tilt, by a jab combo. It's pretty much instant, which makes the character just much more ambiguous and tricky than they really need to be. Another thing that's crazy about them is the fact that their up throw and both down throw combo into stuff. For example, I've seen people do down throw into jab. I've seen people do down throw into force smash. If you think they're just not paying attention, it's an, it's an option. I've seen people do uh, down throw into neutral B as well. But the one that takes the cake is up throw. Because out of up throw, you can land a bunch of things. First of all, you can land neutral air, which will true combo into, for example, border or backer. And if you drag them onto the platforms, you can do a ton of damage. As you can see, that was a pretty simple combo to do. If you have a little bit of practice, you can definitely put in the time to do crazy grab combos. And all the platforms will extend combos because after you land into a combo, you can always land into neutral air for a free dash grab, or you can do a, a forward into a grab, or a back air into a grab or dash attack. Like forward and back air both combo into grab and dash attack. So the potentials that the character has to combo are much higher than most characters. And if for some unforsaken reason, you have ink during these combos, you take a massive amount of damage. So as you can see, this character just has the most reliable throw combos. And it's just really hard to deal with this, the character's damage output. They just basically touch you a little bit and then you take a massive damage. But another thing that's really overpowered about Inkling's throw is that they actually have a kill confirm. Now there's actually a list that I'm going to put in the description below in which you can see up throw upper kill percentages. But um, just to give you an idea, this is not the exact percent, but just to give you an idea of concept is that that's pretty much what it looks like and you die. So there's some characters that in which if you get up or up throw, you might just die with up there. And at worst, you they you're forced to buffer air dodge out of the situation, which makes you a very easy prey for a mix up because they can just pretend to uh, up and then they can just up smash you here and you die. So. The character just has too many mix-ups that you have to wor uh, worry about. Uh, but here's another really crazy thing is that, let's say I put Krom at 80%, right? You might think, okay, Krom will not die at 80%. You know, that doesn't sound too dangerous. Now, let's say I roller them, and then I, here I have a lot of time to do anything I want. 
As you can see, this is actually a reliable kill setup, and it grounds you for quite a long time. I've had people that are really good at mashing. I can, st I still have enough time to cancel roller, charge a force smash, charge an up smash, because up smash is two hits. The first hit of up smash will take off the opponent from ground, and the second hit will be full knockback. And force smash is really, really strong. So even if you don't kill them, you fully ink them as well if you smash them. As you can see, now Crumb is pretty much fully inked. So even then, it's still a very, very amazing combo. So Roller can be canceled in two ways. You can Roller, press B, and it ends in the ground. You can end it. You have to wait a little bit before you're able to end it. And you can also jump out of it. Um, so you have two mix-ups. If you jump and then air dodge out of it, kind of like a wave dash, you actually have less lag than just jumping from it. So it's actually quicker to do it that way. So you gain more control. Also, if you roll, if you roller someone, and then you press B shortly after hitting them. Sometimes, if you time it right, you don't even have to even walk up to them. You're just in barely in range of force smash. So sometimes you don't even have to space it. So it's that good of a kill setup. Um, not to mention that. So I, I just throughout this video, I've showed you like how to play. You know true combos, graph setups, how to ink, the concept of why they're good. But here's even more things about this character. Uh, first of all, they have one of the best recoveries in the whole game. Just peek at this. This up B will take you places. There's very few situations where you will actually die from this up B. You can recover from pretty much the blast zone. As you can see, I'm right in the bubble at the very bottom and I'm up B and I'm good to go. Like I'm trying to try to go as low as I can. Even barely then, I'm not able to recover. Here's another cool thing about that it can do is that if you use roller while up in the air and you jump, you can jump from the roller, but it won't waste your double jump. So you actually have two jumps midair. So you can actually, like, let's say you're getting juggled and you don't want to waste your double jump. You can just do this, jump, jump again, up B, which makes their recovery is one of the best in the game. But that's not all. They can also, um, they also have one of the very best recoveries in terms of grab. Uh, in terms of grab animation during the up beam. So as you can see, uh, there's this concept called two framing, which if you're not familiar, um, every character when they grab the ledge, they have a window of two frames about where they can be punished. So you can down smash them or spike them and whatnot is what you see in a lot of compilation videos. However, Inkling for some un for some unforsaken reason, they grab the ledge with their LB lower than almost pretty much lower than almost any other character in the whole game, which makes them almost invulnerable to two frames. There's a lot of times where you could do moves that are literally hidden at the ledge with a downer or a sound smash, and it won't even land and attack them. So they're completely pretty much you got you have a, a humongous privilege in terms of your LB recovery. Not to mention that you also have a wall jump. So let's say you're at the ledge. You can also do mix-ups like wall jump and then neutral B to barely make it back on the ledge as a mix-up. You can also wall jump back here. Wall jump and throw a mine and then recover. There's just so many mix-ups this character has. It, he has pretty much inkling in general has one of the very best recoveries in the in the game. If not, maybe possibly even the best one just on, on mix-ups alone. Like the inkling, <laughs> inklings in general are just crazy. But there's more. <laughs> I'm not even done. So let me hit Crumb off the level. Now you see the LB has a headbox, right? Now let me try to hit Crumb with this. You will see a headbox that to me is actually nuts. You see that push away headbox? That's almost like a fox shine. It actually kills a bunch of cactus off the level. So if someone's trying to edge guard you, you want to save your double jump because the hitbox is around under inkling. So you can jump over them last second and then up B and kill them. And if you're, they're edge guarding you, they're likely to go to the side of the edge guard or AKA off the level, which means that they're just dead because they might have used their double jump to try to edge guard you, which makes edge guard in this character almost impossible. They're that nutty. So these are pretty much the basics of the character i just show you basic combos the objective of how to ink how to ink the easiest the mix ups recovery what makes the character good pretty much all the basics that you need to do to get started on inkling um as the very last concept i just want to show you how to play neutral inkling in journal you're going to be dashing around you're going to be jumping here and there if you land any of your aerials your bnbs aerials you know what to do go into a jab go into a grab go grab combos throw ink into your opponent if they don't want to approach you that's when you throw a mine you can also roller to catch rolls. 
to catch when people are grounded and use it as a tech chip. Just be mindful of one concept, however, is that if they're grounded, if your opponent is grounded and you roll her, you actually don't get the hitbox that you want. Now, let me get ink again. Oh, I already have it. Um, Just hit him off the level. As you can see, they actually go up if you hit them all grounded. So when your opponent's grounded, you actually just want to wait for them to start rolling or doing something, and then you roll it. So you get the grounded hitbox. Otherwise, you're going to get that going up in the air hitbox, which you don't want. It's kind of like if you hit them in the air. You don't, you don't want that hitbox. You want the ground option so you can do more damage. Um, other than that, you're going to be dashing around, dash attacking, dashing around, grabbing, dashing attack, doing aerials into true combos. Every, every time you get a grab, you forward throw, you up throw, and then you have a lot of fun with that. Um, the cat care also, you want to use mines off the level to edge guard recoveries. Sometimes put at the ledge, sometimes go off the level on a B. Also works really well. I think I think this is the main basis of the cat care. I think they're insanely strong. They have so many mixes, so, so many things they can do. But yeah, this is pretty much the basics of how to play Inkling. Let me know, guys, in the comments below if you enjoyed this video and if you learned from it. And good luck in, in the battlefields with Inkling. This cat care seems to be the best in the game. I think they're the best in the game. Most top players are playing them right now, so if you care about doing well in serious matches then this character is your go-to i think in my opinion the most flexible character in terms of weaknesses i can see swords giving them a little bit of trouble but they're so quick and so nimble that they can actually just bait and punish swords really easily like when opponents throw around sword moves they can just dash in for a grab or dash in for a dash attack or dash in for a jab so i think the character is flexible enough to win those matchups and also, I think that if you're a Diddy Kong player in Smash 4, I think you will really like Inkling because, to be honest with you, they play very similar in terms of feel to how Diddy Kong without a banana will feel like. Um, that's just my take on it. Regardless, guys, I hope you learned from this video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. And make sure to subscribe. Seven videos a week in this channel. So make sure to keep up with that craziness. With that said, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys around in another video. Take care. Bye-bye. And don't forget, guys, I'm doing a Christmas giveaway for two Nintendo Switch Ultimate Bundles. Make sure to participate by clicking in the link in the description below. Follow all of my social media and become a subscriber both on YouTube and on Twitch with Twitch Prime for free for extra entries as well. Make sure not to forget that.